have three different um, styles of control valve settings, control valve trim set up here. We're going to be talking about how each one of those styles works. <coughs> this style right here is actually included with the body of the valve. This is an older style Fisher A body valve. And this is an example of a double ported stem guided valve trim. This is the valve plug assembly. We actually have two plugs and both of them go into matching seats inside the valve. This has a stem on the top and the bottom that guides both the plugs as they slide up and down. So this valve throttles flow by how closely these plugs fit against the circular seats that they go into. Being a double ported valve body, the way this works is that the flow is actually split. We can see on this valve body itself, we have an inlet, an outlet pipe, there's an arrow here marking that as the inlet. And the flow comes into this middle of the valve, splits both ways, goes down to the bottom seat, up to the top seat, then rejoins to go to the outlet. So this valve assembly right here, this plug, as it moves up and down, it's throttling the flow in two different locations at the same time. They do make single ported uh, varieties. In fact, we're going to look at a single ported globe valve in a moment here. This is a double ported globe valve. And as I said before, the body itself is the Fisher Design A body which I do not believe they manufacture anymore. It's an older style valve. This is a single ported valve trim. I'm holding this without the cast iron body around it. And the way this works is very similar to what you just saw. There's a stem, and in this case a single plug that comes down and matches the seating ring right there. So the way this particular valve works flow comes in from the bottom and tries to get up through the gap between the plug and the seat. So as the plug pulls away, that opens up the hole for flow to go through. As the plug comes down, it closes off the hole for flow to get through. These, this is metal metal contact, so we have matching machine surfaces between the plug and the seat, where the plug drops in and hopefully makes a pressure tight seal. It's exceptionally difficult to get a perfect seal in a control valve. I mean, it's great, it's pretty easy to get something that throttles, but it's exceptionally difficult to get a perfect seal as well. And so that can be a challenge in some applications. If you have an application where you need the valve to give tight shutoff, so it absolutely prevents anything from getting through in the full closed position, you often have to use what's called a soft seat, like a Teflon material or a plastic material that has some resilience and give to it. Because over time, these metal surfaces will wear, and then they won't precisely match anymore. So metal, metal contact, difficult to get perfectly tight shut off. But for most control applications, we don't need a perfectly tight shut off. Now this does have a guide that goes around it, and it guides the plug. But this guiding assembly really doesn't have anything to do with the throttling of the flow. It simply holds the plug, locates it in two axes, allows it to slide up and down, and also transfers the clamping pressure of the bonnet down to the seat to hold the seat into the body of the valve. That's one definite design difference between the old Fisher A body valves and the newer E body valves. The E body valves, the seats, just set in place and they're clamped in from above. With the A body valves, it's maybe difficult to see, bring the camera over here close. If you look down inside there, you can actually see the seat where the valve plug goes down into. And that seat has a couple of tabs on it that you put a special tool into, and then you unscrew. Those are threaded seats, and they thread into the body. Trouble with that is over time, those can corrode into place, become very difficult to remove. So at the E-body valve, the newer design of valve, they did away with the threaded <coughs> seats for the most part. And what you have is a seat that simply drops into place and is clamped in by the pressure on the bonnet of the valve. <coughs> Much nicer to disassemble than we build. Finally, we come to this which is arguably one of the most popular designs of globe body, globe body uh, valve trim. This is a cage guided valve. When I pull this out, you can see the plug looks different from the other plug. It really doesn't have a contour shape at all. It looks pretty much like a featureless piston. And you have this cage assembly with these funny shaped windows in it. This is where your throttling now occurs. When the plug comes all the way down to the bottom, it actually does rest against a seat, just like on the other valve. This is really only for shutoff. As soon as it opens up here, all the throttling action is being done by the cage. The cage has these precisely cast windows in the side. And as the plug opens up, 
more and more of the window is exposed and you have a path for flow to go through. As the plug comes down, more and more of the window is cut off and you don't have room for the flow to go through. So the throttling action actually happens here with the covering or uncovering of those cage windows. They call this a cage-guided valve. Very popular style of valve. One of the reasons it's popular is because if I want this valve to have a different characteristic as it opens or closes, all I have to do is drop a cage in place with a different shape of window, and it gives the valve a new characteristic. Compare that to this here, the stem-guided globe valve. The way this works, the actual throttling action occurs with this shape right here, the bullet shape that pokes in through the center of the seat ring hole. That contour defines how the valve opens up, how quickly or rapidly it opens up as the stem is withdrawn. So if I want to change the characteristic of this valve, I have to change out the entire plug. And uh, because this is locked in place with the stem, that usually means changing out the stem as well. More things to change out. The cage, on the other hand, is a rather easy part to take out, drop back in, and change. Uh, very easy to change the characteristic of a cage guided valve. More difficult and labor intensive to change the characteristic of a stem guided valve. And that's especially true if we take a look at a double ported valve, like the A body we have over here. With the double ported valve, You have two plug assemblies, or one plug, I guess you call the whole thing a plug. But we have two different ports on it. <clears throat> They're different sizes, so one can slip inside the other when you look for the, uh, the seat holes. And so the idea here, the throttling of this valve is also dictated by the shape of these contours here on the plug. So to change the characteristic of this valve, you'd have to change out the entire plug assembly. And then make sure it's perfectly matched with both seats here. When it comes down, it makes good shutoff of both seats. So, double ported, stem guided control valve. This here is a single ported, stem guided control valve trim. This is a cage guided control valve trim, where the piston is guided and throttles the fluid flow to the shape of this cage.